The last video talked about how to define assignment operators that allow us, for example, to assign arbitrary things to objects of type fraction, based on, of course, our control as the implementer of the fraction class over what we allow to us to be assigned. Uh, and that's part of our end goal of having our fraction objects behave indistinguishably from ints or doubles or other numerical types. So we can do arithmetic, we can assign stuff to them, whatever. And there's one last thing to talk about, and it's a little bit more obscure than most of the other, it is technically an operator, but most of the other operators we've discussed tend to be a bit more common. But I think it's worth mentioning uh, in the service of achieving that end goal. And it goes back to this idea of type coercion, which is what's really happening here. And this goes back to the C language. So in C, you already, you learned about this, which is if I have a float and an int, for example, I can just assign a float to an int, even though they are not of the same type. And we know, especially now that we've spent so much time with the more complicated typing system in C++, that in general, type safety is important. In general, for most types, you can't just assign a value of one type to a value of another. Um, and there are times when that makes some amount of sense. For example, for the coercion, which is where you convert one type to another without explicitly asking for that, um, of a float to an int. And when I coerce a float to an int, I chop off the decimal point and I only keep the integer portion of that. And so that's what's happening there. But think back to what I've been talking about over the past couple of weeks, that one of the defining features of C++ in terms of its design philosophy is the fact that it holds nothing back. Any behavior or appearance that you get from the language that the designers provided, so built into the language, you can duplicate with features of the language on your own types. So for example, you can add numbers together with a plus operator, which means if you make your own object, you can define a plus operator for that. Um, you can assign one a value of one type to another with an assignment operator. And that means you can write your own assignment operators to uh, create that behavior as you see fit for your objects. And there's one last thing, which is what if I wanna do something like this? So I have my fraction x, it is six over 10. I then want to print out the value of x as a fraction, but I also want it to assign x directly to a double value. Now we know that six over 10 can be converted to a real number. And in fact, the fraction object all along has provided us that ability. So we have this function to real, which just converts the fraction to a real number by dividing the numerator by the denominator and returning the floating point result. Um, what I wanna do though is have that be seamless. I don't wanna have to call a function. I wanna be allowed to just assign a fraction to a double. I don't really wanna be able to assign a double to a fraction. So I don't wanna have, to, I don't know if I wanna be able to write something like this because I don't know how I turn an arbitrary real number into a rational number. But I think because it's reasonable that I can turn a fraction into a real number, why can't I do this seamlessly? As usual, we'll see if we can upset the compiler a bit before we do it. And it turns out the compiler is just is done with being helpful. It's just saying no. Uh, so it says can't convert a fraction to a double. Well, it doesn't even say sorry, but I think it means sorry. I think the compiler is Canadian to some extent. So um, on line 118, I've got fraction on the right hand side and double on the left. And it says can't do it. So what do I do to fix this? Well, in the previous video, the way I fixed a problem similar to this was to find my own assignment operator. So I could think about this as, oh, I could define an assignment operator that lets us um, take a double on the, on the left-hand side and assign to it a fraction on the right-hand side. But there's a problem, which is that you can only put the single equals assignment operator in the type um, on the left-hand side. And I don't get to add stuff to the type double. It's not under my control. I was able to add an equals operator to fraction because I'm the one writing the fraction class, but I can't add stuff to the type double. So what do I do instead? Well, there is another option, and it takes care of not only the case of assigning a fraction to a double, but also cases where you want to use a fraction in the middle of a real valued arithmetic expression like this. So if I do something like this, if I write, I don't know, like 6.3 times x plus 0 0.3, maybe it can, you can observe this and say, it sounds like what you want to come out of this is a double. Like you want a double when you're done. So really, I guess the way to solve this would be convert x to a double and then perform all of the arithmetic normally and then assign the result to xr. What I'm about to show off is a feature that will also fix this problem. It'll make it so that if ever you need to coerce a fraction to become a double, just out of nowhere, you can now do it. The same way that I could, um, when I want to assign a, a value to i, I could write something like six, whoops, nope. 
I could write something like 6 times f plus 10. And the compiler would figure out what you eventually want to do here is take some double-valued result, I think this whole thing would be a double, and then force it to be an int. Automatically convert the, or sorry, not double, float. Automatically convert the float to an int, uh, or coerce it. Uh, and so we're going to do that. We're going to, it turns out there's a type of operator that you can write that tells the compiler this is a type that can be converted automatically to some other type. Um, before I do that, I'm going to try running this, but I'm going to run it with dot to real, both to show off that there is an obvious conversion, so x should just be equal to 0 0.6 as a, a, a double value, um, and that maybe you can agree that although this isn't that bad, it does sort of um, destroy the illusion that x is just a number. It makes it look like x is something different. I want x, a fraction object, to behave indistinguishably from a float or a double or an int, except, of course, that it contains a rational number and not a real number or an integer. So I could just do dot to real. And other languages like Java, which does not have operator overloading, force you to do that. Of course, in Java, you couldn't write this. Well, in Java, you wouldn't consider things like implementing assignment operators to begin with because there are no um, operator overloading features that allow you to do that at all. Um, so I want to write just this, xr equals x. So we'll compile again to get the error again. Uh, yeah, there it is. And now I'll write the operator. So what I'm going to write has to go inside the class. It is uh, not an assignment operator. So it's designed for converting instances of fraction to some other type. And it's a very strange looking thing because it doesn't seem to have a return type in the usual sense. It is called a, we can call it a conversion operator to define the way of converting fraction seamlessly to some other type. And it looks like this. Um, the const part is optional, but I think it's a healthy thing to do. So what you do is you write operator with no return type before the word operator, and then you just give the name of a type. So it, it's sort of an operator that converts to a specific type. Here, I'm giving operator double to convert the fraction to a double. I could also make, if I wanted to, operator int, although it's harder for me to understand exactly how I convert a fraction to a single int. So you could do this for double or int or any other type. I could make an operator that can automatically converts fractions to pairs of ints or vectors or something, whatever I want. When I define this operator, I'm telling the compiler it now has free reign if I ever want to assign a fraction to a double to do so, to perform the conversion using the operator on line 87. And actually, in the service of that, why not write a print statement to prove that? Um, say inside conversion operator. Okay, so what am I going to return? Well. In this case, I could just return uh, to real uh, because I know that there is a member function that, that already computes the real valued representation of this fraction. I could just call that and return the result. Or if I wanted to, I could write it again from scratch. So I could just take this and return this inside of uh, the operator. But here, the healthy thing to do here is to, I think, the healthy coding practice is to just call the other member function if it already exists. So I'll do this uh, and we'll see what happens. And we can see it does compile, and if I run it, we notice it prints out that it got inside the conversion operator just where we expected it to, so on line 123. And sure enough, on line 126, we have the real value representation. And so again, one more step. I think one of the last steps we need to take to make it so these fraction objects, once they're created, behave pretty much exactly like any other numerical type. I was able to define operators that allow the fraction object to fully participate in the world of numerical types without standing out, without sticking out like a sore thumb. We'll run it one more time to, just to get rid of that print statement to show that off. And so now I can convert from fraction directly to double, and the programmer using the fraction type doesn't need to bat an eye. The compiler does it for them.